Published, 1623 EDT, April 14, 2018, Updated, 1731 EDT, April 14, 2018 President Trump has vowed to carry out further airstrikes on Syria if the regime dares to use chemical weapons again, as Nikki Haley lashed out at Russia during a fiery meeting of the UN Security Council. Scores of fast jets, fighters and destroyers fired more than 100 missiles at three military targets in Syria on Friday night in retaliation for President Assad's chemical weapons attack on the rebel enclave at Doma on April 7. While President Trump greeted the end of the attacks with a tweet saying mission accomplished, Ambassador Haley promised the U.S. was ready for another strike if Assad crossed the chemical weapons red line in the future. The time for talk ended last night, Haley told an emergency meeting of the Security Council called by Russia. We are prepared to sustain this pressure. If the Syrian regime is foolish enough to test our will. I spoke to President Trump this morning and he said if the Syrian regime uses this poisonous gas again, the United States is locked and loaded. She also accused the Russians of covering up crimes committed by its ally, Assad, who she said had used chemical weapons 50 times in the past seven years of warfare. Russia can complain all at once about fake news, but no one is buying its lies and its cover ups, she said of Syria's strongest ally. Haley said. Russia was supposed to guarantee Assad would not use chemical weapons, and Russia did the opposite. We cannot stand by and let Russia trash every international norm that we stand for and allow the use of chemical weapons to go unanswered. President Trump said Saturday in his first comments since the air raid, thank you to France and the United Kingdom for their wisdom and the power of their fine military, could not have had a better result, mission accomplished. So proud of our great military which will soon be, after the spending of billions of fully approved dollars, the finest that our country has ever had, there won't be anything, or anyone, even close. He tweeted. President Trump pictured addressing the nation on the airstrikes on Friday, has vowed to carry out further airstrikes on Syria if the regime dares to use chemical weapons again, as Nikki Haley lashed out at Russia during a fiery meeting of the UN Security Council Ambassador Haley, left, told the UN Security Council the US was ready to strike again if, Assad, right, crossed the chemical weapons red line in the future this footage shows the remains of the Syrian Scientific Research Center, a suspected chemical weapons facility. After Friday's airstrikes scores of fast jets, fighters and destroyers fired more than 100 missiles at three military targets in Syria on Friday night in retaliation for President Assad's chemical weapons attack on the rebel enclave at Doma on April 7. Pictured, the remains of the Syrian Scientific Research Center on Saturday Trump hailed a perfectly executed strike just hours after launching a series of attacks on Syria. He wrote on Twitter on Saturday morning, Thank you to France and the United Kingdom for their wisdom and the power of their fine military, could not have had a better result. Mission accomplished. He added, So proud of our great military which will soon be, after the spending of billions of fully approved dollars, the finest that our country has ever had. There won't be anything, or anyone, even close. Part of the calculation this week has also been gaming out how Russia will respond either in the region or around the world. Russia proposed a motion at the Security Council to pass a resolution condemning the airstrikes, but this was rejected with her only Russia, China and Bolivia voting in favor. The country's ambassador, Vasily Nebensha, hit back at Haley's insults by accusing the U.S. of hooliganism and breaking international law. Why are you seeking to plunge the Middle East into such difficulties, provoking one conflict after another? Pitting one state against another? He said, is the latest wave of chaos being unleashed only for the sake of that? President Trump signaled the shift in his attitude toward Russia earlier this week when he said that everybody involved in the poison attack, including President Putin, would pay a price. He took direct aim at the man he's repeatedly expressed a desire to get along with in spite of Russian aggression and election meddling in his national address on Friday, informing Putin that he and his government will be judged by the company that they keep. He also discussed the issue with Theresa May on Thursday, during a phone call in which both leaders reportedly agreed on the need for action. Trump's administration seemed ready to turn the screws on Moscow on Saturday morning as it prepared to make good on the president's promise that Russia, like Syria, would pay for its inhumanity. The sanctions that were mentioned in the talking points remain unconfirmed, and neither the White House nor the Treasury Department immediately responded to requests for comment on the revelation. At a morning briefing, the Pentagon also said that the airstrikes on Syria were very successful and that the coalition met its objectives. We hit the sites, Pentagon spokeswoman Dana White said at a Saturday morning briefing. It was mission accomplished, 
she said, the White House's talking points on the airstrikes emphasize the grotesqueness of the photos of children of dead and dying children as a call to action among the world's civilized nations. Surrogates for the administration were told to stress in media appearance that actors who use these abhorrent weapons will be held accountable for their actions but make clear that strikes are not intended as a provocation against the Russian Federation or its forces in Syria. We do not seek armed conflict with the Russian Federation. Nations that can but do not act to stop horrific attacks like the one in Syria make themselves complicit in these outrages, the White House instructed its allies to say, and everyone must understand that the costs of using chemical weapons will always outweigh any military or political benefits. The talking points that were provided to DailyMail.com by a source also revealed the United States intend to impose new sanctions on Russia in response to Moscow's ongoing support for the Assad regime which the White House says has enabled the regime's atrocities against the Syrian people. The Damascus sky lights up with missile fire as the U.S., Britain and France launch an attack on Syria Damascus skies erupt with anti-aircraft fire after Donald Trump announced the strikes on Syria on Friday night ET a cruise missile is pictured being launched from a French military vessel in the Mediterranean Sea towards targets in Syria a fighter jet prepares to land at RAF Akrotiri, a military base Britain maintains on Cyprus a fighter jet lands at Akrotiri military British Royal Air Force Base, Cyprus, on Saturday. Saturday, April 14 Syria air defenses strike back after air strikes by U.S., British and French forces in Damascus The time for talk ended last night, Haley told an emergency meeting of the Security Council called by Russia, We are prepared to sustain this pressure. If the Syrian regime is foolish enough to test our will Russia's ambassador to the UN, Vasily Nebensha, hit back at Haley's insults by accusing the U.S. of hooliganism and breaking international law whether the strikes would have the intended effect keeping Syrian, dictator Bashar al-Assad from gassing the people of his country again, remains to be seen. French Foreign Minister Jean-Yves Le Drian said Saturday morning that a lot has been destroyed in last night's strikes but additional strikes could come if Assad crossed the red line of using chemical weapons again. President Trump's mission accomplished claim drudged up old memories of another Republican president, George W. Bush, standing under a banner in 2003 and declaring the same thing. Bush's war in Iraq lasted for years, and when the U.S. finally left the power vacuum was filled by ice as France says a large part of the Syria's chemical arsenal was destroyed during coordinated strikes that the U.S. and U.K. joined the country in launching on facilities known to be used in the production of the deadly weapons. American, British and French forces launched the airstrikes on two chemical weapons facilities in a military command post in Syria early Saturday local time in retaliation for a chlorine gas attack a week ago that left up 75 civilians dead. He said, on the question of chemical weapons, there is a red line that must not be crossed, and if it should be crossed again, there will be another intervention, but I think the lesson has been learned. Meanwhile, Syrian government tweeted shortly after the assault. Honorable souls cannot be humiliated. State TV said the country's air defenses shot down 13 missiles in the Kizwai area south of Damascus and claimed three civilians were wounded in the attack on the military base. The Pentagon disputed those claims on Saturday, with Lt. Gen. Kenneth McKenzie, director of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, telling reporters, as of right now we're not aware of any civilian casualties. A senior official also said that none of the U.S. missiles were intercepted by Syrian forces. The strikes carried out by the United States consisted of more than 100 missiles, the Pentagon indicated, with Secretary of Defense James Mattis describing the number as a little over double the number of weapons that were used in last year's air assault on Syria. That April 7, 2017 attack on a Syrian airbase after Assad's confirmed use of chemical weapons on civilians consisted of 59 Tomahawk cruise missiles. McKenzie on Saturday said the exact number of missiles launched was 105. At his Friday evening news conference, Mattis said the latest round of strikes sent a very strong message to Assad and his murderous lieutenants and that right now this is a one-time shot driving home a message that conflicted with the president apostrophe S. That will depend on Mr. Assad should he decide to use more chemical weapons in the future, Mattis said of future strikes, in a news conference that followed Trump's remarks. Mattis confirmed that chlorine gas, and possibly sarin, was used by Assad's forces to poison Syrians a week ago. An RAF tornado comes into land at RAF Akrotiri after concluding its mission. Four Royal Air Force tornadoes took off to conduct strike smoke rises above Damascus after the air strikes. The U.S., Britain and France waged up to 120 airstrike smoke rises over the capital Damascus after airstrikes struck Syria early Saturday, April 14. 
Local time Trump said the purpose of the U.S.-led strike was to establish a strong deterrent against the production, spread and use of such chemical weapons. But he said America does not seek an indefinite presence in Syria and looks forward to the day when it can withdraw its troops from Syria. In a statement, British Prime Minister Theresa May described the coalition air assault as a limited and targeted strike that does not further escalate tensions in the region that and while this action is specifically about deterring the Syrian regime, it will also send a clear signal to anyone else who believes they can use chemical weapons with impunity, she said. French President Emmanuel Macron said the red line set by France in May of 2017 had been crossed. We cannot tolerate the trivialization of chemical weapons, which is an immediate danger for the Syrian people in our collective of security, Macron said. This is the direction of the diplomatic initiatives put forward by France at the United Nations Security Council. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis, Wright, and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff General, Joseph Dunford, second from Wright, brief members of the media on Syria at the Pentagon a photo released on the Twitter page of the Syrian government's central military media shows anti-aircraft fire through a night vision device on the outskirts of Damascus. A loud explosions rocked Syria's capital and lit up the sky with heavy smoke. Hours later crowds of Assad supporters gathered in the center of Damascus in a show of defiance. Hundreds of residents gathered in Amaway Square, many waving Syrian, Russian and Iranian flags. Some clapped their hands and danced. Others drove in convoys, honking their horns. We are your men, Bashar, they shouted. Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman Joseph Dunford said that all three areas the coalition struck and destroyed were specific to the Syrian regime's chemical weapons program. The Scientific Research Center was used for the development and testing of chemical and biological warfare technology, he said. Another target, a storage facility west of Homs, was a primary location for sarin and precursor production equipment. The third target was a chemical weapons equipment storage facility and an important command force. General Dunford said U.S., British and French entrenched naval and air forces were involved, but for operational security, he would not be more specific than that. The U.S. emphasized that steps had been taken to minimize civilian casualties. French President Emmanuel Macron said the Assad regime crossed the red line with the chemical attack in Doma. He is pictured center with close advisers British Prime Minister Theresa May described the coalition air assault as a limited and targeted strike that does not further escalate tensions in the region. We are prepared to sustain this response until the Syrian regime stops its use of prohibited chemical agents, Trump in his address said. He also said in the remarks that lasted a little more than eight minutes that he had a message for two governments most responsible for supporting, equipping and financing the criminal Assad regime, Iran and Russia. In 2013 President Putin and his government promised the world they would guarantee the elimination of Syria's chemical weapons. Assad's recent attack and today's response are the direct result of Russia's failure to keep that promise. He said, Russia must decide if it will continue down this dark path or if it will join with civilized nations as a force for stability and peace. He added, hopefully someday we'll get along with Russia, and maybe even Iran, but maybe not. I will say this, the United States has a lot to offer with the greatest and most powerful economy in the history of the world. Iran's foreign ministry on Saturday strongly condemned the attacks on Syria and said Washington and its allies would bear the responsibility of the raid's consequences in the region and beyond. Iranian state media reported. Undoubtedly, the United States and its allies, which took military action against Syria despite the absence of any proven evidence, will assume the responsibility for the regional and trans-regional consequences of this adventurism, Iran's foreign ministry said in a statement carried by state media. Russian lawmaker and the deputy head of Russia's Foreign Affairs Committee Vladimir Jabarov said Moscow was likely to call for a meeting of the United Nations Security Council to discuss the airstrike stop. The situation is being analyzed right now. Russia will demand a meeting of the UN Security Council, I am sure. Donald Trump said on Friday evening he had ordered precision strikes on Syria in retaliation for the evil and despicable poison gas attack that killed at least 60 people on April 7. A young victim is pictured a child receives oxygen through a respirator following a poison gas attack in the rebel-held town of Doma. A poison gas attack killed up to 75 people that the U.S. and its allies say was carried out by Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad on April 7 in Doma near Damascus. These are not the actions of a man. They are crimes of a monster instead, Trump said referring to Assad, pictured. Trump also warned Russia and Iran about their association with the Syrian government. President Putin is pictured on April 12. My fellow Americans, 
A short time ago I ordered the United States Armed Forces to launch precision strikes on targets associated with the chemical weapons capabilities of Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad. A combined operation with the Armed Forces of France and the United Kingdom is now underway. We thank them both. Tonight I want to speak with you about why we have taken this action. One year ago, Assad launched a savage chemical weapons attack against his own innocent people. The United States responded with 58 missile strikes that destroyed 20% of the Syrian Air Force. Last Saturday, the Assad regime again deployed chemical weapons to slaughter innocent civilians, this time in the town of Doma near the Syrian capital of Damascus. This massacre was a significant escalation in a pattern of chemical weapons used by the very terrible regime. The evil and despicable attack left mothers and fathers, infants and children thrashing in pain and gasping for air. These are not the actions of a man, they are crimes of a monster, instead. Following the horrors of World War I a century ago, civilized nations joined together to ban chemical warfare. Chemical weapons are uniquely dangerous not only because they inflict gruesome suffering but because even small amounts can unleash widespread devastation. A purpose of our actions tonight is to establish a strong deterrent against the production, spread and use of chemical weapons. Establishing this deterrent is a vital national security interest of the United States. The combined American, British and French response to these atrocities will integrate all instruments of our national power, military, economic, and diplomatic. We are prepared to sustain this response until the Syrian regime stops its use of prohibited chemical agents. I also have a message tonight for two governments most responsible for supporting, equipping and financing the criminal Assad regime. To Iran and to Russia I ask, what kind of a nation wants to be associated with the mass murder of innocent men, women and children? The nations of the world can be judged by the friends they keep. No nation can succeed in the long run by promoting rogue states, brutal tyrants and murderous dictators. In 2013 President Putin and his government promised the world they would guarantee the elimination of Syria's chemical weapons. Assad's recent attack and today's response are the direct result of Russia's failure to keep that promise. Russia must decide if it will continue down this dark path or if it will join with civilized nations as a force for stability and peace. Hopefully someday we'll get along with Russia and maybe even Iran, but maybe not. I will say this, the United States has a lot to offer with the greatest and most powerful economy in the history of the world. In Syria the United States with but a small force being used to eliminate what is left of ISIS is doing what is necessary to protect the American people. Over the last year, nearly 100% of the territory once controlled by the so-called ISIS Caliphate in Syria and Iraq has been liberated and eliminated. The United States has also rebuilt our friendships across the Middle East. We ask our partners to take greater responsibility for securing their home region, including contributing large amounts of money for the resources, equipment and all of the anti-ISIS effort. Increased engagement from our friends, including Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Egypt and others can ensure that Iran does not profit from the eradication of ISIS. America does not seek an indefinite presence in Syria, under no circumstances. As other nations step up their contributions, we look forward to the day when we can bring our warriors home and great warriors they are. Looking around our very troubled world, Americans have no illusions. We cannot purge the world of evil or act everywhere there is tyranny. No amount of American blood or treasure can produce lasting peace and security in the Middle East. It's a troubled place. We will try to make it better, but it is a troubled place. The United States will be a partner and a friend, but the fate of the region lies in the hands of its own people. In the last century, we looked straight into the darkest places of the human soul, we saw the anguish that can be unleashed and the evil that can take hold. By the end of World War I, more than one million people had been killed or injured by chemical weapons. We never want to see that ghastly specter return. So today, the nations of Britain, France and the United States of America have marshaled their righteous power against barbarism and brutality. Tonight I ask all Americans to say a prayer for our noble warriors and our allies as they carry out their missions. We pray that God will bring comfort to those suffering in Syria. We pray that God there guide the whole region toward a future of dignity and of peace. We pray that God will continue to watch over and bless the United States of America. Thank you, and good night. Thank you Russia's ambassador to the United States warned the White House on Friday that military strikes against its ally will not be left without consequences apostrophe. Insulting the president of Russia is unacceptable and inadmissible, Anatoly Antonov said that the U.S., a possessor of the biggest arsenal of chemical weapons, has no moral right to blame other countries, he added. Alexander Sharon, 
Deputy Head of the State Duma's Defense Committee, said Trump can be called Adolf Hitler no, two of our time, because, you see, he even chose the time that Hitler attacked the Soviet Union, according to state news agency RIA Novosti, Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova, in a statement on Facebook, said the U.S., struck Syria when the country finally had a chance at peace. One must be really exceptional to strike Syria's capital when the country finally got a chance for a peaceful future, she wrote. Israeli officials backed the move, with an unnamed spokesman telling Reuters that the three allies were right to enforce to ban on chemical warfare. Last year, President Trump made clear that the use of chemical weapons crosses a red line. Tonight, under American leadership, the United States, France and the United Kingdom enforced that line, the official said, speaking on condition of anonymity. Syria continues to engage in and provide a base for murderous actions, including those of Iran, that put its territory, its forces and its leadership at risk. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau also backed the attack. Canada condemns in the strongest possible terms the use of chemical weapons in last week's attack in eastern Ghouta, Syria, Trudeau said. Canada supports the decision by the United States, the United Kingdom, and France to take action to degrade the Assad regime's ability to launch chemical weapons attacks against its own people. We will continue to work with our international partners to further investigate the use of chemical weapons in Syria. Those responsible must be brought to justice. Syrian government supporters wave Syrian, Iranian and Russian flags as they chant slogans against U.S. President Trump During demonstrations Syrian government supporters chant slogans against U.S. President Trump During demonstrations in Damascus following the strikes protesters stand outside Trump Tower demonstrating against military strikes in Syria, late on Friday in New York Hudates. Air strikes had been expected since harrowing footage surfaced of the aftermath of the toxic gas attack in the Damascus suburb of Doma a week ago. Trump had reacted with a tweet warning Assad and his allies that the action would not go unchecked. Many dead, including women and children, in mindless chemical attack in Syria, he declared. President Putin, Russia and Iran are responsible for backing animal Assad, big price to pay. Trump told reporters that the list of people he'd punish included the Russian president, if appropriate. Everybody's gonna pay a price, he will. Everybody will, the US president said. After Russia rejected a U.S.-sponsored resolution authorizing a probe of the gas attack and vowed to shoot down U.S. missiles fired upon Syria, Trump took aim at the Kremlin. Get ready Russia, because they will be coming, nice and new and smart. You shouldn't be partners with a gas-killing animal who kills his people and enjoys it. Trump tweeted. The White House left open the possibility of direct military engagement with Russia after the tweet. Russia's deputy prime minister, Arkady Dvorkovich, just brushed the rebuke off, however, saying, according to state media, we cannot depend on the mood of someone on the other side of the ocean when he wakes up, on what a specific person takes into his head in the morning. The French presidency on Saturday released a video on Twitter showing what it said were refail war planes taking off to attack targets in Syria. It was not immediately clear whether the planes were taking off from an aircraft carrier or a military base on land in video released by the French presidency. Moscow has claimed all along that the chemical weapons attack did not take place and on Friday that it had irrefutable evidence that it had been fabricated. The US meanwhile joined France and the UK in pointing a finger for the attack, and their missiles, directly at Assad's forces. Mattis said Friday evening that he was confident Assad's regime conducted a chemical weapons attack. Nikki Haley, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., said at an emergency meeting of the Security Council, We know who did this. Our allies know who did this. Russia can complain all at once about fake news, but no one is buying its lies and cover-ups. Good evening, as the world knows, the Syrian people have suffered terribly under the prolonged brutality of the Assad regime. On April 7, the regime decided to again defy the norms of civilized people, showing callous disregard for international law by using chemical weapons to murder women, children and other innocents. We and our allies find these atrocities inexcusable. As our commander-in-chief, the president has the authority under Article 2 of the Constitution to use military force overseas to defend important U.S. national interests. Defense Secretary James Mattis says the U.S. and its allies have taken decisive action against Syrian chemical weapons infrastructure. The United States has an important national interest in averting a worsening humanitarian catastrophe in Syria, and specifically deterring the use and proliferation of chemical weapons. Last year, in response to a chemical weapons attack against civilians and to signal the regime to cease chemical weapons use, we targeted the military base from which the weapons were delivered. 
Earlier today, President Trump directed the U.S. military to conduct operations, in consonance with our allies, to destroy the Syrian regime's chemical weapons research, development and production capabilities. Tonight, France, the United Kingdom and the United States took decisive action to strike the Syrian chemical weapons infrastructure. Clearly, the Assad regime did not get the message last year. This time, our allies and we have struck harder. Together, we have sent a clear message to Assad, and his murderous lieutenants, that they should not perpetrate another chemical weapons attack for which they will be held accountable. The 70 nations in the Defeat ISIS coalition, remain committed to defeating ISIS in Syria. The strike tonight separately demonstrates international resolve to prevent chemical weapons from being used on anyone, under any circumstance, in contravention of international law. I want to emphasize that these strikes are directed at the Syrian regime. In conducting those strikes, we have gone to great lengths to avoid civilian and foreign casualties. But it is time for all civilized nations to urgently unite on ending the Syrian civil war by supporting the United Nations-backed Geneva peace process. In accordance with the Chemical Weapons Convention prohibiting the use of such weapons, we urge responsible nations to condemn the Assad regime and join us in our firm resolve to prevent chemical weapons from being used again. General Danford will provide a military update. Based on recent experience, we fully expect a significant disinformation campaign over the coming days by those who have aligned themselves with the Assad regime. In an effort to maintain transparency and accuracy, my assistant for public affairs, Dana White, and Lt. McKenzie, director of the Joint Staff, will provide a brief of known details tomorrow at 9 a.m. The Friday night assault earned tepid support from Democrats in Congress who said they are awaiting additional information from the Trump administration about the targets and goals of the strike. Senator Mark Warner, the top Democrat on the Upper Chamber's Intelligence Committee, said, while the U.S. and our allies must not turn a blind eye to Assad's violent inhumane attacks against his own citizens, military action in Syria must be measured, as part of a coherent strategy to prevent Assad from using chemical weapons without further destabilizing an already volatile region or inadvertently expanding the conflict. Nancy Pelosi, the House Minority Leader, said that Assad's weapons attack was a brutally inhumane war crime that demands a strong, smart and calculated response, but she argued. One night of airstrikes is not a substitute for a clear, comprehensive serious strategy. The president must come to Congress and secure an authorization for use of military force by proposing a comprehensive strategy with clear objectives that keep our military safe and avoid collateral damage to innocent civilians, the leading House Democrat insisted in a statement. President Trump must also hold Putin accountable for his enabling of the Assad regime's atrocities against the Syrian people. Vice President Mike Pence briefed Pelosi and other congressional leaders by phone after skipping a reception and rushing back to his hotel hotel in Lima, Peru. House Speaker Paul Ryan and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell received calls notifying them of the action before the president's address. The vice president's communications director, Jared Agan, said, So did Pelosi. Pence was unable to reach Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer until afterward, Pence's spokesman explained, because the top-ranking Democrat was on a flight. The vice president was attending a summit in Peru on Friday in Trump's stead. Trump called off his trip as he mulled how to respond to the attack in Syria. House Speaker Paul Ryan meanwhile praised Trump's decisive action in coordination with our allies, adding, We are united in our resolve. Senate Armed Service Committee Chairman John McCain applauded the airstrikes but said they alone will not achieve U.S. objectives in the Middle East. I hope these strikes impose meaningful costs on Assad. The message to Assad must be that the cost of using chemical weapons is worse than any perceived benefit, that the United States and our allies have the will and capability to continue imposing those costs, and that Iran and Russia will ultimately be unsuccessful in protecting Assad from our punitive response, McCain said in a statement. Schumer said the airstrikes were appropriate yet cautioned the Trump administration to be careful about not getting us into a greater and more involved war in Syria. Rep. Adam Schiff, the ranking Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee said there is absolutely no question that gas attack merits a strong response. However, he said he remains concerned the U.S. will become mired in the horrific and complex civil war that has been raging in Syria. While these joint American, British and French strikes are morally justified against the Assad regime's gassing of its own people, they take place with no congressional authorization, he asserted. Senator Tim Kaine, a Democrat on the Senate Foreign Relations and Armed Services 